Okay guys, I'm going to take some time to go through um, this PowerPoint that I have linked in Google Classroom over probability. So we're kind of switching gears from what we've been doing um, uh, for the sake of not being able to work with VEX right now. So we'll return to that when we get back, but we'll take a, a, a quick detour here through probability and statistics and, and hit on a little bit of uh, the basics of those. So first of all, with probability, um, it is the likelihood that a given event will occur. Okay, so um, a lot of times we deal with uh, weather with that. Um, we play games. There's a lot of probability involved in games. Um, <clears throat> there are three different types of methods of probability. There's what's called empirical, which is through observation. So an example of that would be um, if I said uh, that over the 10 years of teaching, I've noticed that about a fourth of my students use yellow folders for math class. Um, I have that observation history of seeing that, and therefore I can I can say the probability of a kid walking into my room would have uh, is about 25% that they have a yellow folder for math class because I have that data. Theoretical is using known elements. So if I flip a coin, I know that a coin is 50-50, right? 50% 50 heads, 50% tails. Therefore, it's theoretical probability that if I toss a coin, the, the probability of it landing on heads is 50%. Subjective is making an assumption. So something like, uh, I assume that uh, because Ella is tall, she is good at basketball. That would be a subjective assumption, okay? In reality, I have no idea, but I would just assume that based on uh, the fact that you want to be tall to play basketball, and Ella is tall. Probability components. There are four components. We have an experiment. That's the actual activity happening. The sample space is the possible outcomes, all of the possible outcomes. Um, the event is a subspe subset of the sample space. And then the outcome is what actually happened. So here's an example of those four elements uh, with just tossing a coin one time. So I want to know what is the probability of a coin landing heads up? The experiment is me actually flipping the coin. The sample space is that we could get heads or tails, right? Those are all the possible outcomes. The event is a sub uh, sub plot of that. So I want to I want just heads. That's what I want to have happen. And then the outcome is I flip it and see what happens. It actually landed on heads. Um, and so that is the actual outcome. Okay. Um, when you were talking probability, um, you can express probability as a fraction, a percent, a, de a decimal. Um, odds are slightly different than probabilities, but um, <coughs> you, you usually see a, a probability listed as one of those three things. 50%, 1 half, um, 0 0.5. And be able to work between those things. Um, the total probability of all possible events is one. So if I flip a coin, there are two outcomes. It was heads or tails. Each of those has a 50% chance, or one half uh, would be the fraction. It's one half heads and one half tails. And if I add those together, the total probability is one. So this formula tells us relative frequency. Um, and it is simply just the number of uh, outcomes where X happened divided by the total number of events that occurred. Um, so what is the probability of a toss coin landing heads up? We've got heads or tails. Um, there's one total outcome of heads. There are two total outcomes that could happen, heads or tails. So the relative frequency would be there's one chance of heads. There's two total uh, things that can happen, so 50%. Be the exact same thing for the tail for the coin landing tails up. Okay, so what is the probability of tossing a coin twice and it landing heads up both times? So we'll make a little probability tree here. And this basically says that the first one is heads, the second one could be heads or tails. If the, if the first one is tails, the second one could be heads or tails. So we see these different outcomes, heads and heads, heads and tails, tails and heads, tails and tails. How many desirable outcomes? So if I want to land heads up both times, that only occurs one time. Total number of possibilities is four. Therefore, the relative frequency is 
what is the probability of tossing a coin three times and it landing heads up exactly two times? So if we make a factor, a probability tree for this, we see that we could have all these different outcomes. I'm not going to read through those, but basically is the first one heads or tails, and then based on that is the second one heads or tails, and then based on that is the third one heads or tails, and we get all these different outcomes. So how many times would it land on heads exactly twice? So I look through here and I count the number of times that we get heads exactly twice, which would be three times. How many possible outcomes are there? If I count all those up, there are eight. Right? If I, there are eight total outcomes that could happen. So three out of the eight, the probability of being heads twice is 37.5%. Each trial has only two possible outcomes, is, is what we call a binomial process. So if there's only two things that could happen, uh, hence bi, binomial, there's only, there's only two ways that it can go. Yes or no, on or off, right or wrong, those are just options of, or examples of a binomial process. Um, <clears throat> trial outcomes are independent. So if I flip a coin, doesn't matter if it was heads or tails the first time, it does not uh, affect what I get the second time. Um, here, this we, so we start to get into some um, formulas that look a little complicated. This is what's called the Bernoulli process. And uh, it's basically that we have uh, a probability um, where x is the number of times for a specific outcome with n trials. So n is the number of trials that we do. So if we flip a coin three times, th n would be three. X is the number of times for a specific outcome. So let's say I want it to be heads. I would say that X would be heads. Um, and then um, P is the probability of, of success on a single trial. And then Q is the probability of failure on a single trial. If you don't remember what the exclamation point is for, that's called factorial. And what that means is if I have something like 5 factorial, that means that that is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, the product of all the integers less than or equal to that number. So we'll use that formula for this. What is the probability of tossing a coin 3 times and landing hands up twice? So we already figured out that there was 3 and 8. So um, using the formula, we have n factorial. So I'm tossing it three times, so three factorial, three times two times one. We want it to land heads up, so P is success. Uh, so what's the probability of, of, ha of getting it to land on heads? That is 50%, and we want that to happen twice. Q is the probability of that not happening. So what's the probability of it not being heads? That's also 50% because there's a 50% chance that when I flip a coin, I get tails. So that we want that to happen one time. Okay, so I want two heads, one tails. X factorial, again, X is the number of times that I want heads, which is two. So two times one. And then N minus X factorial, N minus X would be three minus two, which would be one. One factorial is one. If I... I multiply all those numbers together and then divide, what I end up with is 37.5%, which is 3 and 8. Okay. Um, now, for this specific example, um, dealing with small numbers, it was probably easier to look at, a fa look at a, a probability tree and count up the number of outcomes. However, um, you know, if the numbers get really big, I don't want to have to make that probability tree every time. Okay. So, uh, this will help you uh, with uh, calculating those without having to do a ton of work in terms of writing out all the different outcomes that could occur. Um, there's something called the law of large numbers, which basically says um, that the more times that you do an event, the closer your um, results should mirror the theoretical probability of that happening. For example, if I toss a coin one time, uh, whether it's tails or heads, after one trial, I would have that it would be 100% heads and 0% tails, for example, if it landed on heads, right? So my, what I'm, my experimental probability is that um, it's 100% going to land on heads and 0% land on tails, when in reality we know that the theoretical probability is 50% that it lands on heads. 
So I do it again, right? And if I do it again, I might get 50-50 or it may stay 100 to 0. Um, and so what happens is, obviously with small numbers, your probability could get skewed quite a bit. So for example, if I toss a coin five times and I go heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, the probability of getting heads is 60%, three and five. But if I instead do fi uh, 500 times instead of five times and I count all of those and I figure out, well, how many times it land on heads and how many times it land on tails, that probability should get closer and closer and closer to the actual theoretical probability of 50%. Um, probability of and, so if I want um, two things to happen, probability of A and B, as long as those are what are called independent events, which means that they don't affect each other, it's simply just the individual probabilities multiplied together. So what is the probability of rolling a 4 on a single die? That is 1 in 6. What is the probability of rolling a 1 on a single die? That is 1 in 6. What is the probability of rolling a 4 and then rolling a 1? Okay, so again, it doesn't matter that I rolled a 4 for the second one to be a 1, right? That doesn't change the probability of that. So those are independent events. I roll the dice, and then I roll it again. I've got um, a 1 in 6 chance for a 4, and then a 1 in 6 chance for a 1, which means we have a total chance of 1 in 36 of that happening. Or, again, these are independent events. Um, it's the sum of the probability if I want an or here. So um, what is the probability of rolling a 4 on a single die? Again, that's 1 in 6. A 1 is 1 in 6. So what if I roll it one time and I want it to either be a 4 or a 1? Okay, so not a 4 and then a 1. I just roll it once and I want it to either be a 4 or a 1. Well, that probability is 2 in 6, right? There, are, I add those two probabilities together and I get there's a 33% chance that I get a 1 or a 4. Probability of an event not occurring is simply just subtract the event occurring from 1. So what is the probability of not rolling a 1? Well, there's only 1 out of 6 1s, so that means there is a 5 out of 6 chance that I get something else. All right, two cards are dealt from a shuffled deck. What is the probability that the first card is an ace and the second card is a face card or a 10? So there are 52 cards in the deck. There are four aces. There are 12 face cards, and there are four tens. What is the probability that the first card is an ace? Well, that's four aces out of 52 cards, which is 7.69%. Since the first card was not a face card, what is the probability that the second card is a face card? Well, um, that means we still have 12 face cards out of 51 left. There's only 51 left because I already pulled an ace, right? So there's only 51 total cards, but all 12 face cards are still in there. Since the first card was not a 10, there are 4 and 51 10s left, right? So our probability for this is we want the probability of an ace, and then we want a face card or a 10. So the probability of an ace is 1 in 13, and then if I know my first one is an ace, we have a, a, a 12 in 51 chance, which is reduced to 4 out of 17, a 12 in 51 for a face, and a 4 in 51 for a uh, 10, which means altogether there are 8 favorable cards here out of 51, is the idea. So I have uh, 1 in 13 times 8 in 51, I'm sorry, 16 in 51. Uh, multiply that by uh, 3, sorry, 16 and 51, which gives me a 2.4% chance of that happening, right? So, um, you know, if I, if I want an ace and then um, a face card or 10, in order for that to happen, uh, that's, my, that's my percent chance of that occurring. If the first card is an ace, what is the probability that the second card is a face card or a 10? Okay, so the idea here is simply that um, I don't it, I don't want both of those things to happen. So let's say that I know that I got an ace, right? I don't want I don't have to factor in the what are the chances that it is an ace. I know it's an ace. So then what is the probability that the second card is a face or a ten? That is simply just this sixteen out of fifty one, which is basically saying that there are fifty one cards left and there's sixteen chances that it's either a ten or an, uh, sorry a ten or a face card. 
conditional probability, probability of an event E given A, um, which just means that uh, an example of that would be one card is drawn. Um, probability of a queen is uh, 1 in 13, right? There are, there are four queens out of 52 cards. But if I know it's a face card, all right? So probability, it's given that it's a face card, what's the probability it's a queen? Well, now instead of 4 out of 52, it's 4 out of 12. There are only 12 face cards, four kings, four jacks, four queens. So the probability to queen knowing that it is a face card is actually just 4 to 12. Then we get into this conditional probability. Um, probability of two events, A and B, both occurring. Um, <clears throat> so again, we already talked about if A and B are independent, it's just multiply the two different probabilities. But if they are not independent, I need to think about this. I need to think about those given uh, ideas. So um, we can get into this thing called Bayes' theorem, which looks really confusing. Um, there's an example uh, that we'll go through here, knowing these values. Um, and then uh, on the worksheet that you're going to work through, um, you'll use this one time. And, and again, it looks a lot more complicated than what it actually is. So here's, an, here's, the, here's the example. Um, <clears throat> a cell phone company is manufacturing LCD screens and they outsource those to three different vendors and those vendors are A, B, and C. So vendor A supplies 60% of those screens, vendor B supplies 30%, and C supplies 10%. Quality control experts have determined that 0.7% of the ones from A, 1.4% of the screens from B, and 1.9% of the screens from C are defective. Question is, if a cell phone was chosen at random and the LCD screen was determined to be defective, what is the probability that the LCD screen was produced by vendor A? Okay, so I know it's defective. What are the odds that we got that from vendor A? Okay, so here's, here's what the actual uh, probabilities are going to look like. So... <clears throat> I want to know the probability that it came from vendor A, given that it is defective. I know it's defective. Okay, so we know the probability that it's from A is 60%. That's where they get 60% of their screens. B was 30%, and C was 10%. Okay, so those are the individual probabilities that, that I got the phone from each one of those places. Now, without, the, without knowing if it is defective or not. The probability that's defective, given that it's from A was 0.7%, defective ones from B was 1.4%, and defective from C was 1.9%. Okay. So using this formula, this is what we're going to say. So on top, it's the favorable outcome. So it's what's the probability that came from A times what is the probability that it was defective given that it was from A. And then on the bottom, it's each one of those things from each company. So it's the exact same thing that we had on top. That's what we have here. And then it's what is the probability that it's from B times what is the probability it's defective if it's from B, and then the same thing with C. So looking at those calculations, it's 60% chance it came from A. These are the defective, the number of defective ones from A. Have that again. And then from B, 30% chance is from B. And with a 1.4% with a chance that it's defective from B, and then the same numbers for C. And if we work that out, we end up with a 40.78% chance that that defective screen, I know it's defective already, that defective phone came from uh, vendor A. Okay, and you could do the same thing with B and C. All you would do is change what goes on top here. So if I want to know from B, I would just throw this on top, the 30 times 0 .0, uh, 0 0.30 times 0 0.014. Or if I want to know from C, I would throw that part on top. 